Sin James. Sin James. Sin James. So I would, with these three days, we would journey with the Lord in understanding what it means to be generous. So this is how we are going to approach it. Today we are going to talk about the spirituality of generosity. In other words, the source of our generosity. And I think the one who introduced me just gave a hint to what I'm about to do today, which is to look at why we must be generous. From, from what source comes our generosity? Tomorrow we will look at certain practical ways of being generous. And on the last day we'll look at challenges that comes with generosity challenges that comes with generosity to begin with let me read a scripture passage because that is where everything must start from so i will give certain scripture passages but because of time i can't read all but if nothing at all we'll read this one from second corinthians chapter seven second corinthians chapter nine sorry verse six to eleven second corinthians chapter nine verse 6 to 11 so i read remember the one who sows meagerly will reap meagerly and there shall be generous harvest for the one who sows generously each of you should give as you decide personally and not reluctantly as if obliged god loves a cheerful giver and God is able to fill with every good thing so that you have enough of everything at all times and may give abundantly for any good work. Scripture says, He distributed, He gave to the poor, His good works last forever. Amen. And verse 10 says, God who provides the sower with seed will also provide him with the bread he eats. Amen. When we talk about generosity, the first thing that I want us to do is to play with words a bit. So when you hear the word generosity, it draws your attention, especially the first part, to certain words like gene, like genealogy. And all these things are telling us where generosity is coming from so if we say that generosity has a certain link because of this the rhyming of the words with a gene we are saying that generosity should be in your gene your dna and if you are talking about your gene and your dna then it depends your dna and your gene depends on your parents right so if for example you are you belong to a family with a certain gene type automatically you receive that gene because you come from that family because you come from that parent the same way when we talk about gene gen generosity and genealogy genealogy talks about family family tree so we are dealing with you belonging to a family that is recognized as generous so certain families have certain identities and that is why at the, in the book of matthew we read the genealogy of jesus to tell us the kind of family jesus comes from and therefore we are looking at the kind of people whom we belong to as a family that this church as a family will have the identity as generous people so two things we are looking at genealogy the family and then we are looking at our source of course if you are looking at the family then we know that our heavenly father is the one from whom every good thing comes from and so at the beginning of the world in genesis we are told that god created us in his own image and likeness so what is the image of god and how can we become like God? The image of God is God who loves. And love is useless if it is not expressed. 
every love expresses itself that is why god is not alone because he has a lover and he loves and so god the father who loves the son shares the holy spirit with the love between the father and the son and so in that we know that generosity does not have to do with something that god does but it has to do with the nature of god himself it stems from his very being because when you mention god you are talking about someone who gives so today i want us to look at five things five principles stemming from the nature of god about generosity today these five principles would determine to a large extent how we are generous because we are looking at how is god generous and then we are going to use it to determine how we ought to be generous so we are if we understand the generosity of god then we will know how we can also be generous because it is in our gene it is part of your nature god created you naturally to be generous that is why if you are not generous you are sad because it must stem from it now the first thing number one which we want to identify with god or we we perceive when we look at the generosity of god is this god does not only give what he has in other words when we are talking about generosity we are looking at two words what and who what and who god is not only giving what he has but he gives who he is and so the very famous uh, uh, this one i'm going to we are all going to recite this passage the famous passage john 3 16 let's go amen i see we all use the same version so there was no difference i don't know whether this one is good news version or niv but for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he gave his very being so sometimes when we talk about the generosity of god we are thinking oh yes god created the world he has given us everything he has given us air he gives us food he gives us clothes all those are true these are what things things that god gives that is the least that god could give you the greatest god gives is his very self so we see the gifts of god in two ways in his creation and in his redemption he created all things in fact when you read genesis the creation of the world sometimes you have to wonder why did god create man at the very end why? because he wanted to make sure that man would not lack set everything in place so that when he comes he can't complain and say oh i don't have this and i don't have that no everything has been prepared for you so god has provided everything the things that we need and yet that was not enough he gave us his very self and we don't only see that in john 3 16 we also see that in creation itself because he says god molded man out of dust and after that he breathed upon man he gave himself to man now this principle is very important why because very often we are generous with things but not with self it is very easy to be generous with things in fact sometimes the way we are even generous with things can be insulting to the one who is receiving the generosity you see someone so oh, i need something then yeah you can throw you can even throw the money what you have done is that you have given a thing but you have not given yourself there are some of us who have been generous to people but we have never seen their faces or gone to see them and talk to them you don't call them you don't they don't you are like 
a concept in their minds. You are not giving yourself. You are giving things. And it is not enough to give things because the nature by which God created you is not for you to give things only, but for you to give yourself. So, two weeks ago, one priest shared with me, he went to the outstation after celebrating Mass, one man was very grateful to God and was thanking God. And he came to share testimony. He says, for 10 years, he is praying for good health. What was the good health? He had undergone kidney transplant 10 years ago. And this is the marvelous thing. He says, you see that beautiful woman over there? That's my wife. That's the one who gave me transplant. When you are a young person and you say, I have chosen this man to marry, what it means is that if he lacks kidney, I will give mine. God is good. Maybe you didn't hear me. And if you heard me, maybe you are thinking, Father is joking. I'm not joking. This is generosity of self. This is literally giving yourself to another, knowing that he is in me she is in me because the kidney that is in me is from this person and so please before you marry a young person ask yourself can i give my kidney to this man you see you see we we tell ourselves but let's be honest when people are in love they say Medow, medow, namasomu ye, medemakuma ina bede. Please, how many hearts do we have? One. So if you give it out, it means that you are, you are dead. So if you can sing that song and say, "I love him," he, my my heart belongs to him. Oh boy, it doesn't belong to him. Your kidney, kra, that is two. And you can give one out and still live on the other one. A treswa will say, me per spare time. I want the spare one too. That one too is important. It is very important for us to know this nature of God who gives not only the things he has, but he gives his very self. That's the first thing. Number two, God gives indiscriminately. In other words, God gives without selection. When we read Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, he says that he lets his sons, his son, shine on both the good and the bad. When the sun is shining, you don't see it shine only on those who are good. What it means is that, you know, sometimes we think that people must deserve our generosity. Have you deserved the generosity of God? Do you think God gives you the things he gives you because you deserve them and because you are good? Look, the psalmist says that he pours his gifts on his beloved while they slumber. What it means is that whilst you are doing nothing, God is giving you his gift. The same way we who belong to God and who comes from that same gene and who belong to the family, the genealogy of God's generosity, means that we must also learn how to give indiscriminately. You, know, you don't only give to the one you are attracted to. When the, when the young man comes and he says, I want, to, I want money to pay the school fees because he's a man like you. He says, I don't have money. When the young lady comes very beautiful with all the paints, he says, hey, yes, you, you want school fees. Do you have laptop as well? And it goes. Why? Because the one who is asking is attractive. But God gives even to those who don't deserve. And sometimes we are very selective in our... When we say that we should give, we should be generous, and, and maybe somebody has done something evil to us, or we think that the person is an enemy. And we are thinking, ah, why should I give to this person? You know what he did to me. Doesn't matter. Because when you go out there and you go to the orphanage, look, you, do, you don't ask them, 
were you good before you give to them? You just give. Because they are humans. In any case, when Jesus says, I was in prison and you visited me, who are those in prison? Are they good people? So our generosity must be indiscriminate. I mean, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter whether the person is white, black, yellow, indigo. It doesn't matter whether the person is good, bad, or semi-good. It doesn't matter. What matters is that he's a human being and your generosity does not depend on him. It depends on the fact that you have a gene in you and you belong to a family that gives. So we must understand this because it comes from the nature of God. We know this. We know that our God gives without selecting. No, he doesn't select. Number three, God gives without reserve. We will see this in John chapter 3, verse 34. God gives without reserve. When we say God gives without reserve, it means two things. Number one, it means that God gives without a limit. He doesn't get tired of giving. His giving is limitless. It's always given. That is what it means. He that, uh, we have what we call donor fatigue. I hope we are we know that people give and then they get tired of giving so sometimes when we ask them, so the donors at a point they will be tired when we say that god gives without reserve we are saying that god never gets tired of giving this is the reason why pope francis have a, has a beautiful statement he says god does not get tired of forgiving us we get tired of asking because for him his forgiveness is limitless. He's always giving. He's always giving. And that is why you will be making a mistake if in your prayer you think, oh, I'm disturbing God. Well, he says disturb him. You, 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 don't, you shouldn't think of God like a human being. No matter the amount of things or requests you make, it's nothing. Because even the ones that you are not making, he's giving it to you. How many of us wake up in the morning and say, God, I want air to breathe? Have you ever prayed like that before? And yet, the very fact that you woke up meant that he gave you the air to breathe and you didn't ask for it. And in fact, we have never asked for it. We have taken it for granted. He, he's, he's supplying it and we are breathing it without. So it is limitless. The second meaning of God gives without reserve is that when we say reserve, it means that you have something and you have others that have been put on the side. So you have bank reserve. You have put some of your money in the bank because you want to what? Reserve it and preserve it. What it means when scripture says that God gives his gift, his Holy Spirit without reserve, it means that when he's giving, everything goes. There is nothing that God possesses that he has not given to you. Think of it. Everything that he has, including himself, has been given to you. And so God gives without holding back and say, oh, I think I'll give him and tomorrow I'll give him the rest. No. He's giving you everything today and tomorrow he will give you everything without reserve. There is nothing else that you are requesting that he won't give you. He has given you everything. So God gives without reserve. And that is why if we belong to this family and if we have this gene flowing in our veins, then we are saying that a Catholic, a dynamic Catholic cannot experience donor fatigue. Amen. Oh. St. James 1, amen. Fatigue, no, I said in the you can't experience donor fatigue because you see your source is limitless and because your source is limitless you can't get tired because as you move it he also moves if you listen he says god gives abundantly so that you may have enough to give so you can't get tired because the one who is giving to you in order for you to give out it's not getting tired supplying. And so far as 
your supply chain and source is flowing, then your giving chain and source should also be what? Flowing. In any case, if your hand is like this, it means two things. It means that you keep things and means that you can't receive things. So why you want to say, Mr. Armstrong? You are very strong in the arm. Amen. Number four. He says he gives, God gives without expectation. Luke chapter 14 verse 12. Luke chapter 14 verse 12. Jesus gives, a, Jesus gives an example and he says, when you throw a party, don't call on those who can repay you back. Because you see, when God is giving to you, he's not expecting you to give back to him. God does not give expecting that you you will you will give him something so this is important this is a very important principle why because some of us when we are generous we we can even go to the extent of saying oh people have said when you give to god he will bless you so in your mind immediately you gave then you start you put your pen and your paper down your calculate so when would god repay me as i've given they say to abodo to insuneni na ubehu. So I've thrown my abolo. Now I'm waiting for the results. No. A dynamic Catholic does not give expecting. But that does not mean that because he has given, he will lack. No. Givers never lack. You will not lack. But don't don't be waiting for it as if you are buying God's gift. Remember. That the reason why you are giving is not because God will give you after you have given, but it is because God has given you in the first place. That is why you are giving. We shouldn't get it wrong. We shouldn't get it twisted. The, the reason why we give is not because God will give us in return, but it is because God has given us already. That's why we are supplying so god gives without don't expect don't expect anything that is why if you are a generous person who does not expect anything your generosity will not lack when people don't say thank you you give whether they will say thank you or not you will still give but if you are a giver who is expectant you will always be disappointed and when you are disappointed in no time you get tired Let's learn from the family, the gene, what is running in our vein. He says that he gives without expectation. And the last one, the last one is a song. And this is what I will use to conclude. Um, Catholic hymn now, 357. I'm not too sure. It's one of my favorites. Did I get it right? Can the Catholic hymn number... Oh, beautiful. I got it right. My brain still works. We go. Oh, the love of my Lord is the essence of all that I love here on earth. All the beauty I see He has given to me And this is the part I love Then is gentle as sign You know why sometimes we can be wondering whether God is answering us or he's being good to us or he's paying heed to our request or not. Sometimes you wonder. Sometimes you, you, you listen. The reason is because his giving is as gentle as silent. To the extent that the one he is giving to, the giving is so gentle and silent that he himself does not even recognize what he is receiving. That's how God gives. That is why 
when Jesus was talking about alms giving, he says, do not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing because your giving must be as gentle. He didn't give. Look, we talk about anonymous generosity. The first anonymous donor is God. He gives to the extent that the people he has given to, when he is inviting them to do something, so he says, oh, no, I will not give. It's like a child. You go to the supermarket with a child. He says, mama, mama, I want Fanta. Mama takes the money, buys the Fanta. The child is struggling to open the Fanta. He says, give it to me, let me open. He says, no. He has refused to see who gave the thing to him. So God says, oh, just give me there's a favorite picture i have in um, on whatsapp jesus with a small girl the small girl is holding a, a doll a toby um the panda the small size and jesus has the big toby big size behind him like this and he's saying give me your doll and the, and the child says no what is the purpose of jesus saying give me the small one is so that he, you can make space for the big one that is coming. But because Jesus did not come and say, oh, I have a big door, so give me this. His giving is as gentle as silent. He gives you air. He doesn't make noise about it. He gives, in fact, some of the things, everything that you have, God gave you. But because it is silent, you think that you made your own. You go to work, you take your car, you drive. She, you are gone. You come back, you say, yes, I know how to drive. That's why I got to work. I know how to breathe air. That's why I'm breathing it. You are joking. Let it be taken away from you. Coronavirus has taught us how that works. Go to the hospital, the person is struggling to breathe. And say, oxygen. Then they put the oxygen on you. And they start reading the meter and calculating the amount. We can breathe air even the way that God did not prescribe it to be breathed. We breathe free. And yet, we forget where it is coming from. A lot of things we take for granted, just like your mother cooking for you. You never say thank you because you expect your mother to cook for you. You don't say thank you to God for the air you breathe, for the food you eat because you think you cook the food. Some people have choked on food. Let's consider these five points and subsequently tomorrow and on tuesday god will help us to know what is in our gene and to which family we belong to may god bless us all amen